yesterday was Korean's national holiday was their Memorial Day. And as you know, uh, June 25th uh, is coming up. It will be a 70th anniversary of Korean War. And I know we have all the veterans here, Vietnam. Um, I don't know if there's a Vietnam veteran or Gulf War or Panama or OEF, OIF. Uh, but I believe uh, Mr. Barber, I think this is your uh, final Sunday. You're going back home, right? As you know, uh, he w was here during Korean War uh, as a Navy for a couple years. So once again, uh, let's give a round of applause saying thank you. Thank you, sir. And have a safe journey back home. And thank you for your service. And uh, they're saying uh, General uh, Peck, he was general during Korean War. And he, uh, as the North Koreans are pushing down to uh, Daegu and Busan, he set up the perimeter around Daegu and fighting against communists. And he said a famous quote, he says, if I run, just shoot me. If I run from you guys, just shoot me. And he's 100 years old. And then some of the left-wing Koreans saying, because he went to a Japanese army academy, they dig his grave out if he were ever buried in the Korean cemetery. I don't think it's right. I don't think what people are seeing or saying nowadays are, are crazy. When I was struggling, I heard a song called by Yolanda Adams, Battle belongs to the Lord. Battle is the Lord's. And this morning I was getting prepared, my mind, for sermon. I listened her song over and over again. Everyone repeat after me, please. Ba for the battle is the Lord's. Once again, for the battle is the Lord's. This morning, I'd like to revisit the battle of David and Goliath. Life is full of surprises and unexpected events. Being Christians means you're not a problem free. But you must learn how to overcome the battles through the strength in Christ Jesus. By exploring the battle scene of how David defeated the Goliath, we will learn how the battles can be won, won in our own struggles. Today, in secular world, when you say David and Goliath, it means talking about underdog situation where contest about smaller, weaker opponent faces a much bigger, stronger adversary. But to us, the story of David and Goliath is much more than that. When we learn from a recount of Israeli general called Moshe Dayan, one-eyed general, when he had to fight the Six-Day War against Arabs, Back then, he walked the valley where David fought against Philistines and Goliath. He walked the valley and asked to Almighty God for wisdom. How do I 
fight against this giant army where Israelis back in the 1960s, their army was much smaller. And life is all about receive wisdom from Almighty God how to battle your Goliath. We pursue happiness. We want our kids, our families, and our friends to live in happiness. We desire our nation and the world to create happiness for people. You spend 24-7, you spend 20 plus years in one job, especially if you serve military right now. But if you're not happy, something is wrong. A nation dealing with constant racism means we forget our basics. As you know right now, back home, the Floyd incident, the racism, police brutality, or vice versa, police officers getting hurt. A meaningful protest, but then again, there's others with different motives, destroying houses, rooting. I remember, because I'm one of the witness of racism, especially as I was growing up. When I went to basic training in 1980s, eight, I'm sorry, 1988, I'm the only Asian or Korean in basic training for Benning to become infantry men. And one night I hear this commotion. It's about midnight. You know, it's base training, is open bunk, right? About 40 plus people. I heard commotion, I woke up and hear a black soldier and white soldier fighting against each other. No one dared to stop them. In fact, we made a ring, ring, human ring, them to fight. A black soldier came from Birmingham, Alabama. A white soldier came from Indianapolis, Indiana. A white soldier was a little taller, but they're going at each other. At 4 a.m., fight was done in half an hour, but 4 a.m., this black soldier was hurt, so they called the ER, ambulance came. So next morning, I asked the drill surgeon. His wife was Korean then. I don't know if he's still alive. I asked, what's wrong? Why you guys don't stop? Oh, it's just a ritual. They get over it. And then a few weeks later, again, they're fighting. The same two people fighting. Well, like, oh my God, what's going on? This time in the restroom. So I have to survive. So when I have to show some tricks of martial arts, I really showed that I could defend myself. If you mess with me, I'll mess with you. So no one touched me. But at the, at the end of training, basic and AIT, they shook hands. They shook hands. They hug each other. I don't know if they ever said I'm sorry to another. And when I was scout platoon team leader, and I moved up the rank because of my ranger training, I got my E5 in two years, less than two years from basic training. And I had to take the team, scout team. And these people, they decide to put all black soldiers in my team called Minority Squad. And they gave me a 
code name Lost Boys. It kind of offended me, but then again, I have to sur uh, survive. People don't look at it until they s give you race, racial slur or whatever that might be. But those things back then, they didn't care. But I embraced them, my friends. I had to do better, uh, twice better, the other teams. To show them what minority squad could do. Before we move on, let's examine what are the Goliath? Why the story of David and Goliath matter to us? What this story got to do with us, especially right now, where nation is divided? As you know, I'm not, whatever I'm saying today, it's not about the, a particular organization or people or groups. I'm just making comments. U.S., 40 years ago, this is a nation all the, the whole world look up to, but 40 years ago, where civil rights movement was going on, Black people cannot sit next to white people. It was only 40 years ago. They couldn't, they couldn't use the same restroom. Hey, 40 years ago, where America sent troops to fight for freedom for other countries, but still, 40 years ago, 1960s and 70s, Black people cannot share things with white people. It was only 40 years ago. Not until many years ago, Southern Baptist Convention formally gave apology to black communities, saying, I'm sorry endorsing slavery. There was a program here in Korea where they reportrayed how sla slaves go through in one day where Joseon Dynasty practiced slave very back then. They have right to kill you. If you're a slave, they have right to kill you. They, they have a right to take your woman. Your kids, you have to work all day. So they re-portray this by using actors and actresses. And they got sick that day. Because it's nonstop, hard labor. Many times we face Goliath, we face Goliath but we don't even know the Goliath is your enemy or your friendly. People just sometimes say mixed up, not knowing what Goliath are. Goliath, believe me, is out there, but how do we overcome? Well, some people don't even engage Goliath because they're scared. Because they don't want to talk about, they don't want to be that CNN. The Goliath, in the Bible, he was a champion, a battle-tested general, a warrior, and heavily suited. And he had a bad mouth, especially in this battle, he had a bad mouth. He was talking trash against the Israelites. Bible says he's about, can you step on the, can you step on the, yeah. Bible says he's about nine feet tall, nine feet nine to inches tall. Or secular world says he's about seven feet tall. A armor itself is 125 pounds. And his spear weighs about 15 pounds. What? Can you, so one more? Can I have a, 
young young man, maybe about 12 age, 11. Is there anyone here? Maybe. Yes. So, David, at that time, he was about 10, 11. So, can you just stay there? Okay. Go, go, go next to him. Okay. Yeah. Look at the contrast. Look at the contrast. A battle-tested warrior against a young boy. It's just impossible. Uh, young man, can you come here? So, David, as he's facing Goliath, they say he grabbed a five size of baseball a stones. Don't, don't kill him, okay? Just, just face him. Face him. Okay, just stand there. So this guy covered with armor, right? Okay. Now we have a Kevlar armor vest. Doesn't, the bullet doesn't go in, right? So at that time, he had steel armor, bronze armors, and he had probably his helmet on, so when David using a slant, uh, sling, and then, boom, right? Okay? And then, struck, probably the ball went, all he had to do is move your, move your, uh, tilt your, okay? And the, the rock will go away from him. Give this young man a round of applause. I'll get that later, yeah, it's fine, it's okay. But the Bible says there has some distance, but as David facing Goliath, this big giant, battle-tested, suited with everything he had, the ball struck where? His forehead. Okay. Nowadays, baseball, baseball plays a pitcher. When he pitches, what's the speed of average, the baseball? 100 miles? But still, people don't die unless they get, you know, struck in the head. But David is not battle-tested. But, however, he's experienced what? Shepherd. His resume is in verse 34. Let's talk about verse 34. That's his resume. 34 says, But David said to Saul, Your servant used to keep sheep, for his father, and whenever a lion or a bear came and took a lamb from the flock, I went after it and struck it down, rescuing the lamb from his mouth. This young man, I mean, he, David is brave as a young man. And he looks, they say, feminine and maybe smart, smart, right? But all he had was stones, sling, staff, and he fought off lions, wild animals. But it doesn't stop there. Verse 37, that's not his resume. Verse 37 says, David said, The Lord who saved me from the power of lion and from the power of bear would save me from the hand of this Philistine. So he knew. It's not just his skills, but he knew the Lord, the God, would save him. And verse 47, he says, that is, for the battle is the Lord's and he will give you into our hands. That was his resume. David, never served in the army. Just a young boy happened to deliver lunch for his brothers. And saw, they, he said, uncircumcised people defying, talk trash against people of God. And he was... Outraged. And he took this opportunity to show who God is. We work hard to create happiness. 
for our family, for ourselves, and for others. However, things not always go as we plan. There's all kinds of challenges. That's why we encourage you to go to school. That's why we encourage you to stay in school. That's why we encourage soldiers to go through other trainings, other schools. And don't be afraid to push yourself to the next level because your experience, someday you will use that to help others. I had my personal challenges. I moved when I was 11 years old. At first, I went to Guam. Guam is a, a beautiful island. Back then, we only had 3,000 Koreans, and 90% of those Koreans are construction workers. So we moved there because that received a green card. But then again, the Chamorros or Guamanians are nice people, but somehow they are not nice to me. I got into fight every day. I don't know why they picked me. Maybe I look like a David or Bruce Lee, I don't know. So they make fun out of me. I could barely speak English that time. And maybe, maybe I don't know, maybe I ate kimchi that morning and then I smell like kimchi and that's why they, you know, make fun out of me, I don't know. At school, and one day, a, a three, three Chamorros like, came to me and then whatever they're saying. So I got mad. I pulled my belt out. <laughs> and I swore at them. At the bus stop, they came after me. I fought against them. And it gets worse and worse. So someday, there's another day I had to fight. And then I remembered the fight of David. Should I just say, you could push me around and I'll give you money, whatever my dad gave me, or should I fight against them and stop this now, forever? They know that I am not quitter. One day at school, this was when the break dance was kicking off. Okay, big June box, right? They all move as a big group, about 40 and 50. A person throw a rock at me. I throw a rock at them or him. And he wants to fight me. I said, OK. So he said, noon at the soccer field, OK? I show up. Guess how many show up? <laughs> 40 plus from him. And they made a human ring. What should I do with this Goliath? Should I say, I'm sorry, I lost, you could push me around, or should I say, no, no more? Of course, I faced this giant, and I won. I kicked his butt. I was in DLI. And then, as a supervisor chaplain, when I show up, the chapel was dead. This is a school where young people out of high school, intelligent people, all right, all, almost like they're in college. So this is almost like a, for, for, for us to reach out the, mess, the message of Jesus to win their hearts. But chapel was dead. I'm not blaming anyone saying this. So I want to kind of revive the chapel. But people that at that time working with me, especially chaplains, they rebelled against my ideas to a point where lying, all kinds of bad stuff. So what should I do with, with this Goliath? Either just say, okay, I'm sorry. Just do your, your way. Leave the chapel like dead. Or should I face this giant and turn the battle around 
to win the hearts and minds of these students to Jesus. I had this, this stomach at 3 a.m. So ulcer, gastric, whatever you call it. Because I was so stressed out of this lies they're making. I went to ER. And I thought, I'm not going to give up. After 12 months of hard w work, the chapel became 100 people, young people, worshiping God. But I had to feed them every Sundays. No break. Take them here and there. My son, we're in Washington. After a counseling, I got a phone call. This is DuPont Police Station. You need to come home now. I said, why? Your wife cannot speak, but you need to come home. Your, your son fell from the window. OK. Hmm. So immediately, it's a window. Most likely, he's either paralyzed, neck is broken, or, or wor worst case, or best case, maybe he just broke his leg. So I show up, ambulance came about to transfer him. So I just quickly parked my car, everyone showed up, the neighborhood showed up. And then got on the front of the ambulance, and they said, where, where do you want to go? Which hospital? I said, no, not the Army Hospital. Let's go to the best hospital downtown, Children's Hospital. So as we're driving toward Tacoma downtown, Children's Hospital, the freeway is usually, you know, people get off the work and stuff. It's congested, but it's, it wasn't that day. So ambulance was able to quickly go to the hospital. He fell from uh, 19 feet from the window to a leveled deck. He fell. And then, thank God, not from the back of the, his uh, uh, skull, but his orbital right here. Doctor says it's a miracle because the shock was observed through here, so the brain was intact. They say it's a miracle. So they want us to be on the TV or something, you know, to educate people. I said, no, no we're not going to do that. But I asked him, even this day, he's like, do you saw Jesus? As you're hanging, it's falling. Do you saw Jesus? Of course, he might not saw him, but the miracle, the angels were there. To make a long story short, the giant, we all have our giants. As long as we're in this earth, the giants is going to appear in front of you through people, through events, through environment, whatever that might be. The giants is going to be there in front of you. So when giants are there in front of you, you have two choices. Whether you face it through faith in God, through the power of God, or you give up and the rest of a life you will torment it by that experience. I prayed in the spiritual realm. My son is damaged. I don't know, it's inside. I don't know where. But as picturing the giant says, uh, we will not give up. We will not lose him. We will not let him go. And I cast a stone, imaginary stone, to the unseen giant. And the results, thank God. He's okay. First, accept your situation. When the giant's in front of you, right now what's going on in the U.S. and all, all over the world, especially Christians, we need to accept all these cancers, whatever this fuss, uh, fuss that for the, it's time for us to receive healing. 
that it's time to talk about things. When I applied for LAPD, there were three questions that psychologists asked me. Of course, I failed. They thought I was crazy. First, they thought, what if your partner is same sex? This was a long, long time ago, 1990s. Would you be comfortable? What if he moves on you? Would you be comfortable? That was the question that psychologists asked me. Second question he asked me was, what if you are patrolling down in South Central at midnight, you pull a car over and there's a three big black dude come out of your car, uh, their car, what would you do by yourself? And the last question was, because you are Korean descent, you got a call, you walked in to a domestic violence and you saw a Korean lady got beat up, bleeding. What would you do? I don't, I'm not going to say what I said, but the, the test, the 600 question test, they thought I was a little weird. So they said, come back after six months. Accept the situation and challenge. Don't deny it. Accept and kneel and ask God's wisdom and help. And look at your problems from the same angle as David. Look at the Goliath. He wasn't f terrified, but in fact, he looked at the uh, Goliath just like the animals, how he treated the animals, how he went after the animals. That's why he had this courage. It's not the Goliath, but usually how you overcome the other issues by prayer, by love by embracing, by helping, and bring your fight into the Lord. The battle belongs to the Lord, believe me. Don't matter, you are 90 years old, you are 60, you are 30, and especially you are teenagers, always remember this. When you're facing Goliath and your reputation, and this, you're at the cross, cross point where you have to make a, a critical decision to, to go move forward. Remember, bring it to the Lord. You know, we, we have personal issues. I cry every day. Believe me, I cry every day too. And this... Maybe something that is go rest of our lives, but still, we don't just stop there. We don't just cry and just do nothing, but we, we cry, but we bring it to the Lord. Arena Sandler, this is my last story, and then we'll be done. She was a Polish during World War II. She was a nurse. When Nazis put all the Jewish people in the and tried to kill them. She faced a giant by smuggling little kids from the ghetto, Jewish kids, out of the ghetto, and then gave them a freedom, one by one. Sometimes hide them in the casket. Sometimes hide them in the uh, milk box, whatever that might be. Every day, she was doing her best to rescue these Jewish little ones out of the ghetto. Many years later, she was caught by SS, beat up, locked up, and she received death sentence. But she did not fear against this giant. All the Nazi government at that time was so strong, and SS special police are so strong, she didn't give up. She faced this giant. As a woman, as a nurse, with God's help, one by one, one by one, she rescued the little ones out of ghetto. Thank God the miracle happened. She was freed and became unknown. But someday someone found out that she saved and many lives. So this 
survivors, kids, and their grandkids begin to s recognize her and serve her. And she passed away at the age of eight. Believe the battle belongs to the Lord. Whatever we're facing at this point as a nation, we could overcome this. This Goliath is not strong enough. Well, we have to believe as a church, as a body of Christ, that we could overcome. Bow your heads. Lord, we thank you so much. Life is not perfect. Life is not perfect, but then again, we have a hope. The war is not perf perfect, but then again, we have hope. Because through the story of David and Goliath, we know who will be the winner. The whatever, the, whatever the Goliath might be in front of us, as each individual, regardless of age, sex, uh, race, Help us to overcome this Goliath. Give them a power and strength and wisdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.